So who's excited to make a pair of paper mache collage earrings? Let's get started. Hey, you guys, so I know it's taken me forever to get to where we are gonna make some earrings out of paper. And I could not decide what we're gonna use. Mod Podge, we're gonna do traditional paper mache. And to be honest, we're gonna start this video and I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> So I'm gonna put together just some things that you're gonna need that I assume for my project may come in handy. Um, let me gather the materials and then we'll be right back, okay? But I'm super excited to be back here to be with you all today. So today is Tuesday, what is it, January 19th. I have a slower day in real estate today. So I was like, let me get one or two videos done today. May only be one. I don't wanna overcommit and then don't, don't accomplish it right because it's gonna depend on how much time it takes for the paper mache to dry. So let's get going. I'm gonna try to speed that up by putting it either under a hair dryer or in the oven, but we'll see. I've never, well, I don't wanna say I've never done paper mache. I used it when I was little, right? But I haven't made jewelry out of it. So let's get going. Uh, so let's just assume for kicks and giggles that we're gonna do traditional paper mache. So traditional paper mache, I believe it's flour, water, and glue. Um, if it's not, I'll make a correction. So you're gonna need some Elmer's glue. You can get this from the Dollar Tree, I believe. If not, you know you can get it from Walmart or Dollar General, Dollar General, super inexpensively. So you're gonna need that. You're gonna need something that you can use for a template. I plan to use just some of these wood cutouts that you know we always have that we've gotten from Hobby Lobby and Michaels. Um, we're also gonna use paper, right? So I tore open this Sharpie package and I was getting ready to throw it away and I was like, oh, this is some great cardboard because you could use cardstock to make earrings. So I'm gonna tear this off of here and we're probably gonna use this maybe to make some earrings. I thought it might be interesting as well to use a magazine or some newspaper and just do some tears and cutouts. This is actually a realtor magazine that we get every month and so I do read the interesting articles and then from there, I throw it away, but I was like, oh, well, these would make some cute earrings, right? We just want any type of paper that you like. And I'm in newspaper mode. I don't know because there's so many current events going on. I might, why not make a super cute current event pair of earrings, right? So we're also gonna use our markers. So I'm not sure if you saw the video where I did a haul and I had gotten all these markers from Walmart um, because I, my, all my Sharpies had dried up. And so there's so many different colors in here. And I also did a video where we used, we did a wood burning technique and we used the markers from the Dollar Tree and I showed you how super cute these colors are. These are some great markers. So if you don't wanna spend, you know, I would say anywhere from $6.99 to $13.99 for Sharpies, depending on how many you're gonna get in a pack, then, sorry about that, I recommend you go to the Dollar Tree and get their markers. You're gonna get some really great colors. Um, they won't be as saturated as the Sharpies, but I really like them and I thought they turned out really well on the wood. Also, you're gonna need some cream color or white paint only because in case you decide you wanna do a design that's gonna show up, you're gonna need to make sure there's a flat background, but we'll talk about that. So either you can use some white cardstock or you can do your um, paper mache, paint it white, and then use these markers to color over it or you can use paint. So I'm just sharing with you the things that we're potentially gonna use today in the project. And then of course, if you wanna put a coat on it, you can put some triple thick. I have Mod Podge gloss somewhere, but I don't seem to be able to locate wherever it's hiding. So when we go to put a seal on the earrings, we're either gonna use the triple thick or a Mod Podge gloss. So lastly, the other items you're gonna need are some earring findings depending on um, if you're gonna do clip-ons, if you're gonna do pierce, what have you, you know, whichever you decide, the sky's the limit. Actually, the sky's just the beginning because the sky goes to the troposphere, the mesosphere, and on up into the heavens, right? So the skyline is technically the beginning. So, I know, being theoretical. <laughs> so you're gonna need some earring wires, any kind you choose, and you're gonna need some jump rings. So, I'm gonna get all this laid out and organized and we're gonna figure out our design as we go along. So I would think you also are gonna need some water and some paint brushes. I love using, um, if you've watched any of my videos, just the little inexpensive acrylic brushes. You can get these from Michaels, Walmart, Dollar Tree has brushes, has really great brushes, or you can use some of the sponges, but I prefer these. I don't like natural hair brushes as I've talked about in the past. And who am I? My name is Garlinda, right? For those of you that are new to my channel, hi, welcome. 
So excited that you're here. I own a real estate company, a real estate brokerage here in North Carolina and a renovation company. So full time, I am a real estate broker and um, licensed real estate broker. And the Lord called me to start teaching jewelry making videos. And you may wonder, well, what in the world does that have to do with real estate? Trust me, I was asking the Lord the same thing. <laughs> Just kidding. I did ask that like, well, Lord, why am I going to teach jewelry making? But the Lord said that um, he just wanted me to come on here and teach because it was a creative thing to do. I've designed jewelry for over 30 years and um, it was a way for me to be able to talk to you, share the word of the Lord and still create something that we would all have fun making and be inspired by. So that's really the purpose of my videos. Of course, I also share real estate videos um, about the market. So if you find yourself in the North Carolina market, we work all the way from Raleigh, North Carolina, the capital of North Carolina, down through Fayetteville and over across to the coast of North Carolina. So our tagline or our slogan is from the capital to the coast, we want to be your realtor for life. And also we have access to properties in, I mean, a really great agent and properties in the on the Mexican coast. So if you find yourself wanting to move or live internationally, I'm a certified international property specialist and I can help you with that. So enough about me. Oh, I'm a wife, right? Been married for 22 years, together 30. I'm married, I said that. Um, <laughs> I'm a licensed and ordained pastor and have been going on five years, maybe six years now. Super excited. Tonight's Tuesday night Bible study. And we actually teach Bible study via Facebook on our uh, main pages. So you can find me there on Garlanda M. Price. And then I have two teenagers, one freshman in high school, one freshman in college, and a super cute puppy named Bolt. He's technically not a puppy because in dog years, he's 35. <laughs> but anyway, let's get started. Okay, so I got excited. Look what I found in the garage. So my husband has been in the newspaper a couple of times this year, or last year, I should say, um, because he's a part of a nonprofit here in our local market that helps first time felons um, get their records expunged, um, depending on what the crime was. Um, also helps them get into um, job rehab and job um, programs where they can learn the construction field. So anyway, I digress. Shout out to my honey bunny, Pastor Marvin Price Jr. So I found out we have some newspaper. I'm super excited. So I may not use that considering I really wanted to have a newspaper type design also we're going to use elmer's glue mixed with some salt and water that was the recipe that i saw we could do it with flour salt and water but that's going to take 48 hours to dry i'm not sure that this won't have any drying time as well so we may have two parts to the video sadly or excitedly depending on how you want to look at it um but i think that it's going to be better for me to go with the elmer's glue because it's gonna dry faster and it also gave a smoother finish from what I saw, the pros and the cons. So I won't have to worry about um, the raised texture if we use the flour. So let's think about that and what we're gonna do. And then also we're gonna think about our design. So you could do teardrops, squares, any squiggles, whatever you wanna do. Um, but, and you can always paint these. So I'm thinking that what I wanna do is tear some strips and then go from there to figure out what the base is gonna be. So let's just say that this is gonna be our base. These are gonna be our strips and we're gonna start layering the process of um, making the earring. And what is this great for? You can, people that love recycled jewelry, recycled design, recycled things, you could literally create an entire niche market, niche market I should say, or niche business around recycling, right? Around recycled jewelry, recycled pins, brooches, any type of jewelry, necklace, pendants, whatever you wanna do. Also, this is perfect if you're someone that loves making your own jewelry and you want unique things. Remember I told you I'm always getting compliments. These are some I made that I showed in another video. I don't know, I don't think I did a design on how to make these. Uh, maybe I will if I get a chance, but I love these earrings. I wear them all the time. So um, these would make, your earrings would make great gifts. They're very lightweight when made out of materials like paper because for someone that has, like I have longer ear holes, so I'm not gonna wear a super heavy earring. So these would be great for gifts, a business, um, and what else? Fundraisers, you know, if you wanna raise funds for your organization or for yourself, right? I remember this lady needed to raise money for her um, mortgage. She was behind and she shared with me that she literally caught her mortgage payment up by baking cakes. The sky is not the limit, it's just the beginning, so let's get First thing we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna cut off the bent edges. So you're gonna need a really good pair of scissors. 
I need to sharpen these, but we're gonna cut off basically the that section that was already bent up because I don't want that to be a part of the design. Also, there's a seam right here on the back, so we're gonna go ahead and cut that off because anything you leave on there, think about it as gonna be on the design. And I don't want that, um, that seam on there. So I also am gonna cut off the piece where we tore it. And the weird part is there's a hole in the middle of this thing, which is kind of strange, but there's a hole. I think that might've been where it was hanging on the, um, at the store. So I'm trying to decide if I, I don't think I'm gonna worry about covering this up, which is like where it tore off the packaging, only because we're gonna layer this with the newspaper as well. I mean, anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run and get the water and the salt and mix up the glue, the water and the salt. Um, they did give measurements. I think they said it was two cups of water. I'm sorry, depending on how much paper mache you're making, and they were covering up a balloon, so I'm not gonna measure, right? But they did two cups of glue, which was two of these things of glue. They did one cup of warm water, and they did a teaspoon or a tablespoon of salt. I'm not gonna be that detail-oriented because I'm not that detail-oriented. <laughs> I'm the person that says, well, let's just go ahead and start and figure this out as we go along. So you can make it as loosey-goosey or as sticky as you want. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna apply it. But again, I'm not gonna be using measurements and recipes, so no fussing about that in the comment section. So <laughs> not that you would anyway. And then we're gonna tear strips from the newspaper. And of course, you could go through and figure out, you know, what words you wanna use if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna tear. I want mine to be plain black and white. I'm gonna make sure nobody's face is on there and we'll go from there. So I'm just gonna use a plastic container. Um, of course, I would not use this to eat out of again. Um, yeah, no, we all have these plastic containers laying around that normally don't have lids to match. You're like, uh, where's your lid and why don't you have a mate? Oh, I guess I could take, let me do this the easy way. It's just working on my muscles, you know, trying to flex a little bit. But instead of like breaking my thumb bone, <laughs> let's just go in and pour some out in here. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to put this in a Ziploc bag, but if not, thank God it's fairly inexpensive. So let's go put some hot water in the salt. I honestly wasn't sure what the um, purpose of the salt was. Maybe one of you all know, and you can let me know in the comments section. So now I'm going to. Let's see. I want to be able to stir this up, so I brought the water over. So I'm just going to put a little bit in at a time. And I'm just using the end of a brush to mix it up. I don't know, I'm assuming that maybe the salt is a catalyst or something. I guess a spoon would probably work faster. Oh, I see how it makes like a little, um, like a little paste. So some gloves might be good for this for the, those of you that don't like getting your hands messy. So I'm gonna go and grab a spoon. Okay, right. so I went and got a spoon and you all may know that I buy spoons and plates from the Dollar Tree so that I can use them in crafts. But I'm just stirring this up until so we get a nice paste. And that's pretty cool. I can see how this is a lot easier to use than the um, the flour mixture. Seems like that'd be real messy. But not that this couldn't be messy either, but I think that because we'll be able to use a brush to put this on, you could honestly probably use the spoon as well to put it on, like to um, dribble it onto the paper that you're gonna be putting it on and, and then brushing it on from there. So I'm just gonna keep stirring it up for a second or two, well, a minute or two. How was y'all's weekend and your holiday? It's a big week, the inauguration, inauguration is tomorrow. So, a new regime in place. So, here we go. So now, I'm just gonna put the paper back down because I wanna work on that. You may wanna put something on the surface that you're working on as well. I always work on just clean sheets of white paper from the printer. If you feel like that's wasteful, I mean, you can use anything you want to work on. Some people have like those super cute plastic mats. I don't have that. Um, I did think about getting one. So anyway, 
So let's lay down our little piece of paper. Oh, and I guess it won't matter about that hole in the back if we're gonna put paper over it. You know what I mean? So let me get rid of this spoon. I'm gonna sit this on something. And then I think that I'm gonna use a wider brush. So I have either this one. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use this one. Oh, sorry about that, I was out of focus. So I'm just gonna use like a um, small acrylic brush. And I think that I'm going to put down a layer first on the paper and then start tearing the strips so that we have something to work from, have something for it to stick to. Now you could do it differently if you wanted to, maybe tear the paper, off, the, the sheets of paper off. And then from there, do your layers, but I think it'll be easier for something to stick to. And so I'm just gonna talk, start tearing strips that way, but I wanna make sure that whatever I use has some paper on it, like has some color to it. So maybe two, you wanna leave, what was I gonna say? a little section on the edge dry so you can work from there. So, I'm just gonna tear sheets of paper. It probably would go a little bit faster too if you tear your strips of paper. But remember, I was kind of undecided in the beginning if I was gonna use newspaper or if I was gonna use the magazine, which you probably could do both if you wanted to, but this is going down pretty quickly, I like that. And I love the um, that it looks newspapery. You know how you see those mystery shows and the the um, I hate to say the killer, but the person is like, or the person is trying to blackmail somebody is doing the little cut out newspaper strips. That's kind of what, what this reminds me of. Like, look, you better buy that house, or we're gonna send newspaper strips. I'm just totally kidding. Would not do that. Joking. Okay, so. We're just gonna lay these down. This is so therapeutic, I like that. So I love that <clears throat> the words are just random. And I wanna say that we could probably mix and match some magazine strips in here as well. Now I'm gonna use, let's just do a few more pieces of newspaper. What was I gonna say? I'm gonna um, sit this on something to dry so be sure that we don't want to leave this land here on the paper because you know then it'll stick to our paper we'll have a mess trying to get that up so once it starts to um, once i finish covering everything up and so you can use multiple things right so let's see if there's anything interesting color wise in our realtor magazine i think there is is this right <laughs> because we can just make up anything you know we want as we go along I like that and it can just be current events or it could be um, cutouts of things that are interesting to you um, in other words let's say there were puppy faces or you know money bags anything you wanted to put across here I like how the Realtors Magazine had these little letters right here, which I think are super cute. So I'm gonna put that across there like that. And almost like graffiti, right? And so this is gonna be really cute. So you just wanna go about covering all the edges, covering everything up. Oh, this is covering up too much. Put it over the edge so that everything has a coat. And I'm just brushing everything to make sure. Look, Boat's excited. You can hear him growling in the background. Let me see what other colors I want to use. Oh, look. This one has the word focus. Let me see if I can tear that out. Oh, you guys, oh, I tore focus. Last night, I got to be on a podcast prayerfully. Once the young lady shares it, I'll be able to 
shared on here with you. It was really great. And it was about being in business with your significant other and what happens if they don't want to do business together or they're not interested in the business that you start. Like, how do you handle that? And so we talked about that. And my whole comment was um, when I realized that, you know, Marvin doesn't necessarily love the day-to-day -day operations of real estate, but he loves the renovation side of it. He loves, um, like, the the work side of it, the people side of it, I love. And he, not that he doesn't love the people side of it, but he's not a licensed realtor, right? And so, when we talked about that, you know, well, what could that look like? How can we work together, but still, maybe you're just not in the day-to-day -day operations of our business? I had to respect the fact that he didn't like selling, right? And so, since he didn't like selling, he wasn't going to be interested in every day showing up at a real estate office. And so, I had to honor that. And so, that was something that we talked about is how do you handle it when you feel like your husband or your significant other isn't interested in what it is you're doing. You have to respect boundaries. And so, that's pretty much what we talked about. I'll share that with you. Um, and then you have to go on, right? God has a different calling for all of our lives. And we are not all called to do the same thing, even if we're married or even though we're married, right? And so, by trying to force a square peg into a round hole can often cause conflict and differences that don't need to be there. You guys, look at that. That's so cool. So, I have some words on there, different colors. So, I need to fill in a little bit more. I don't think I'll bore you to look at that. Let me go find a little bit more fill in, and then we'll be right back. Look, the Realtor Magazine has all these cute words at the top. Top broker, focus, top of mind. Um, another one said, how I sold it. So, you could even do a positive affirmations pair of earrings, right, if you wanted to. I noticed too that Fayetteville is on one of the little strip cutouts I use, which is my town where I live. Uh oh, I tore off four brokers. So I thought that, you know, what if you did a pair that was specifically focused on your hometown? I did not mean for that to happen. Talking to y'all and tore up the wrong. <laughs> well, I guess I could still use it. So, I mean, it could be centered around anything, right? But imagine if you just had an earring of your town, or if you just had an earring of um, people, like different people and different um, nationalities. Um, whatever you want to make. I just think it is so cool that you can just tear up so many different things and decide, I want to make something out of that. Let's see if we find something interesting over here. Ooh, I see some fatigues over here. Let's see, like some army. So look, I like that it had the camouflage right there. So I'm going to tear out camouflage and use that. Now again, you can just use a sheet of paper, but I mean, you could use a pair of scissors, but I just want to do it this way. So I'm going to tear that off. How super cute. I'm going to do one more right here and then across the top and we're going to be good to go. And I love how mess free this is. Like I was thinking this is gonna be really messy and I normally don't like messy stuff. Um, like getting my hands all gooey and dirty and stuff like that. But how cool is that? So my university's name is on here. I did tear a piece of the name off, but it doesn't matter. This is, what was I gonna say? You know, this is what we want. It's a collage. That's what I love about this. It's collage-like. Bolt's excited, too. He's like, Mom, I love collages. I honestly don't even know what he's barking at. Come here. See if Bolt wants to go outside for me. Okay. My 14-year-old is doing her online school. So let's do one more right here. That's upside down now. Let me turn that around. Okay, so. If you wanted to, I guess you could let that stick to the back like that, but I don't want that. So, I'm going to do one more even coat across here.
you probably gotta make sure your brush is really super wet so it doesn't stick, because I noticed that it's wanting to stick a little bit to the um, parts of the paper that are already drying. I'm gonna hold this over so you can see it really well. So now you probably could speed up the drying time of this by um, with the hair dryer. And I'll probably do that after I run and get up to go and pick Caleb up from school, from college. It's about, about an hour away, about 40, well not a whole hour, about 45 minutes. Okay, make sure you don't have any air bubbles. So I think now I need to stop so I don't make any air bubbles. How cute is that? So we made a little sheet of all of our collage. Now we're gonna let it dry. I'm probably gonna sit it in the sunlight in the window and let it dry while I'm gone. And then we'll come back and see what it looks like. So what I'm gonna do is I want to show you how it looked once it dried. And now what we're gonna do is I wanna have a glossy coat on here. Um, but I'm trying to decide, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the extra edges. Let's do it from the back. So that way in cutting it off, we don't actually cut the card stock and cut out our design. So what you can do now, after we're gonna do this, is you can either make some templates so your earrings will be even and you can cut them out evenly, or you can do like a free form design. I've seen some people do that and you could paint over it, draw over it, but I just love how the design itself came out. And because I do want it to be glossy, I'm thinking that I should either cut the design out, poke the hole in it, and then put the gloss on it because I'm just not sure if I let it dry with the gloss on, if that's gonna mess it up in some way, but I'm a little snippet. But this is so much fun, and this is like such an easy project. No wonder people make paper mache jewelry. Like, look how super cute this came out. It's really sturdy. So, of course, we got to do something with the back, right? But what I'm thinking is like after we cut out our design, then we could either use the white paint that we had that we talked about, and you can, we can paint white back there, or if we wanted to, we could put another, um, layer of paper back here on the back because this is already dry. I mean, literally this probably dried. I had to go pick Caleb up from college. It's about 45 minutes away. I came back, it was dry. So it didn't take long at all. So I'm wondering if we wanna do something on the back because we still have some other stuff left and then we wouldn't have to paint back here. Let's do that. So stay While tuned. we're trying to tear out our strips, um, Remember we had some of the glue and water left over. So what's awesome is I don't have to worry about anything getting messed up on the other side because it's already dry. So remember we were taking stuff out of, I'm sorry, tearing strips out of the magazine. We were tearing out of the newspaper. And so we had initially put our coat down. So we're gonna do the back just like we would have done the front. So. Yeah, because I was like, you know, why not do it on both sides? Then we don't even have to worry about painting and all that. And we can, you know, do some decorations. So something I didn't show before is you can use any of these little studs or beads, you know, that I've used in other jewelry projects. You can still use these same stickers and things like that, you know, on the earrings as well. So, it, you know, it can be any design that you want. I am enjoying this paper project. I'm like, why hadn't I done this before? So I noticed that it's buckling up just a little bit when I go, when I went to um, put stuff on here. But after this dries, you know what you can do is you can sit it under some books. Just make sure it's completely dry so it doesn't get messed up or anything. So we're just gonna keep laying it flat. And I'm gonna be more thoughtful about the pictures I'm tearing out. So let me open up the newspaper. Sorry for reaching across the camera like that. I saw some flowers over here and the word special. So look, how cute is that? So there's a word special because it was on a, um, a beauty store ad, like a um, hair salon ad, because this is like a local newspaper I'm using. So super cute, see? 
This is so much fun. I remember, y'all remember doing this in school? I know I'm older than everybody else, but I thought this was pretty fun. So let's just do some regular words. Make sure you're not using any bad words, right? If you're tearing stuff out of the newspaper, make sure. Well, I guess they wouldn't have ugly words in a newspaper. So that should be good. Oh, here's some flowers. Like a bouquet. I mean, gosh, you just come up with so much stuff. So look, I like that bouquet. That's super cutesy. I think what I love most about this is the fact that you can collage stuff. So and you can put it anywhere you want it. So I'm just gonna put that at the top up there. Put my finger down here. When I got in the car to get Caleb after I had finished the front, I noticed I had glue on my finger, but it came off so easily. I mean, you could easily wear gloves if you want to, no big deal. I like how this says home town. So I think I'm gonna cut out town and just keep the word home. How cool is that? Put that at the top. I mean, you could even use other stickers. Like if you wanted to use cartoon stickers or something like that, you could use that. I could put town across there. The only thing is it would cover the flowers. So I'm just gonna put it right there. And I love how this kind of has a gloss to it. Let me see what else we can use over here. And look, this was free. So let me see what I want to use from here. There's the word diamond is on here. Let's see. So that's cute. I'm going to hold it up so you can see it too. I mean, you can just, just keep tearing out stuff. The sky is, well, I just keep saying that the sky is the limit, but it's just so fun. Let's pull out something else. I'm just tearing from across the paper. What else can we do on here? Oh, I like the stars. Super cutesy. Oh, and because we have all of those, um, markers some of the markers are like metallic or what have you and this is the back so you know you maybe don't have to put as much thought into the back as you did the front but i think it should just be equally as fun oh hold on i think that word was upside down whatever was on there no upside down alphabet seats Oh, well, that's too close to what that says over there. So let's move this over here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of the little studs that we have back there as well. Let me see what's in the magazine we have. Because we had some cute stuff at the top. Seems like I'm going in like a blue mood. So let me tear this one off because it has some pink chairs. It has those pink chairs right there. We had Bible study tonight. It was the word of God was just so great. Not because we were teaching it, just what God gave us was really, really good. I enjoyed Bible study. So I'll be sure to try to share. I need to upload the video here, but we've been talking about kingdom authority and how God has given us authority over everything in the earth realm and how we have to walk in that. And, um, and how you can defeat the enemy by the power of our testimonies. And um, it was just really, really good. I enjoyed it. So let me see what else I have I can stick over here. Okay, so now we've got everything completely covered. So I'm gonna sit this over by the heat so it can dry. It did bend up some. So what I'm gonna do is after it gets completely dry, then I'm going to sit it under something heavy so it can be flat and then we can begin to cut earrings from it. So that's the other side. I love how this side turned out. So literally from the front and from the back, your earrings are gonna be beautiful and you don't have to worry about doing anything else afterwards except putting on a gloss coat. So we're gonna put some triple thick on here after it dries completely and then we'll come back in part two and finish up the earrings. Okay, you guys stay tuned.